Hi, so today we're going to be talking about infinite while loops and how to avoid them in your code. So an infinite while loop is essentially when you create a loop and instead of ending on a particular condition, you just keep looping forever. And this might seem like an insignificant problem, but it actually happens quite often. And if you don't watch what you're doing, uh, you can induce these in your code and it may be an issue. You may have performance issues, you may have uh, your program crashing, so it's best to avoid them if you can. So we're going to start by actually creating a very, very simple uh, loop. So we're going to create a loop uh, with a stop button and we're going to create a control for the iteration count. So let's just go ahead and do that. So iteration count. And that's a stop button right there. So this is the very essence of a while loop and we can see that as soon as you start running, we can stop this. Now you can see the iteration count got very high. So we're going to actually also add um, a wait. And this is just a very simple VI that allows us to uh, wait 100 milliseconds before the next case. And then we can see immediately that that will play um, a huge role and we can see that it's actually updating at 10 hertz. So now we can actually move forward to the conditions that will uh, stop a loop or at least ones that you should think about in your code. So conditions for stopping. So as we can see already, we have a stop button and we're going to go ahead and call this optional because your code doesn't necessarily need one uh, stop button, uh, as you'll see later, because if you have other conditions, um, you may not want to use a stop button or you may not want to actually even bother wiring that. So we're going to go ahead and actually also uh, get to our next point and let's say there's an error. So this one is actually quite important because if there's an error, uh, we want to potentially stop doing what we're doing and respond to something else. Maybe that means um, responding to the error by actually uh, going to a separate case or executing some other piece of logic to deal with that error. So we're going to go ahead and create a shift register, which is just basically um, uh, a, f a function within LabVIEW for looping that allows us to pass uh, the previous data to the next iteration. Um, and we're going to wire a no error here because right now we have no error. Uh, but this, for example, is just coming off of a regular uh, error wire. So maybe you had some error before that. And maybe you might want to immediately just never execute this loop. So we're going to go ahead and connect that wire across. And if there's an error here, it'll pass along to the next iteration um, the way it currently is. So what we're going to do is also immediately use the compound arithmetic boolean operator so we drag and drop that and then we change its mode to or if it isn't already there and so the first thing we can do is immediately wire the air wire in and we can see that labview automatically recognizes that um, this is actually as you can see made up of a status a code and a source and it automatically take, takes the source as a true or false and wires this into this boolean operator so what we can go ahead and actually delete and unwire the stop button and instead wire the result to that and clean this up. So now we know that if there was an error along this wire, we could essentially immediately stop looping. But that's not enough. We don't want to just wait for an error. We also want to check for some other options. So the, the third and arguably most important is why you're actually here. What are you doing in this loop? So this is definitely where the meat of your argument is. This is where you're actually checking for some value. Maybe you're pulling a serial connection. Maybe you're pulling a DAC uh, driver. Um, maybe you're reading some data. Whatever it might be, you want to make sure that that is actually being done. Uh, so let's go ahead and say this is a command. So this is going to be my simple uh, example. And so we're going to, all we're going to do is we're going to check did I type in a certain key? So this is going to be hard coded. This isn't anything special. This is just a proof of concept for you guys to visualize. So let's just say test. So if I were to type test the way it is, then this would also uh, exit my loop. So you can see immediately, so now we have error, then we have uh, our Boolean coming from my comparison. So let's just call that uh, while loop condition met. So this may be pertinent to you guys. This may not. 
for example, your, your while loop might not actually be waiting for something. Maybe your while loop is your entire program. And so you have some initialization before, you have some initialization after, and really you just want to loop until the user presses stop. In which case, then instead of using this code, you might just want to wire this code for a stop or both. Um, and, and finally, one, one thing that often gets overlooked is in a while loop, how long do you want to loop for? Uh, and again, this one's optional. Uh, and, and what you're going to see is actually most of them are optional, but it's good to have at least two of them uh, and arguably three of them. So the last one is timing. So how long do you want to be in this loop? Uh, you may want to check for five seconds. And if you don't get a reply, for example, if I don't type this in within five seconds, you may just want to stop. For example, your code, this might be a small subset of your code where you just check for something, but you don't want to keep checking. So for example, going back to that serial connection, let's say you open up a serial connection and you're reading and expecting data, but your device is not responding. It doesn't give you anything and you never receive a reply. Your data is never there and you're going to just keep looping. There's no error, but you're not getting any data and maybe you didn't even wire a stop button. So you're going to keep looping forever and there's no way to stop it short of aborting your program and you know that's not a very clean way and that could actually damage uh, sometimes your device sometimes what you're working on it's just not the best option so we're going to go ahead and actually add uh, something that LabVIEW has internally which is uh, a timing uh, elapsed time button so when you add this elapsed time module it will allow you to monitor a specific amount of time and then afterwards say we've met that threshold and really uh, return it true. So in this case, we're gonna say, we want to wait 20 seconds. So that'll give me enough time to actually type this test and also uh, illustrate that it does um, time out if I don't type it in. So we're gonna go ahead and click okay. And we're gonna see that, obviously this is a fairly big icon. So let's shrink this, we're gonna make this an icon. So let's clean this up. And if you can see, uh, timing has elapsed, it's, it's quite small, but you can see that we can wire that option actually to, to, our, um, to our output. So you can see elapsed time, time has elapsed and that's true or false. And that will be also checking our timing now. So those are your three options that are typically the most common. And why don't we go ahead and just for the demonstration uh, also wire our stop button. We've already shown that this works, but it doesn't hurt to show that we can always add more logic. So let's go ahead and um, start our application. So we can see that right now it's doing nothing. And we can see that if we stop, it'll stop roughly six and a half seconds. That's what we waited. So let's start it again. Let's, let's use our second test condition. So, um, or rather our fourth one, which is our, our timing. So if we wait 20 seconds, uh, you'll see that as soon as it reaches 20 seconds, it will immediately stop because that condition will have been met. So you'll see that right in about two seconds here. So exactly at two seconds, which is what we expected from our timing element. So perfect. So now we have either a stop or a timing um, reason to exit the case. So let's, let's continue and let's actually try our test. So if I type in test and I click enter, that won't actually work. And the reason it won't work is because this string hasn't been initialized properly. So here, let's do update value while typing and let's disable wrapping because we don't want to actually wrap. We just want to do limit to single line because we don't want our enter button to be um, uh, creating a new line. So, and let's do update value while typing because we want to make sure our, um, we want to make sure our control actually reflects what we're changing, even maybe before we click enter. So maybe we want it to be immediate. So let's click run. And in this case, immediately stop because I have this entered. So let's just delete that. You can see that it's increasing. So we'll go ahead and type in. And as soon as I click this last small case T, immediately it stops. And, and so that's a good way to uh, also uh, end when your condition hasn't been met, what you really care about, the crux of your um, your while loop, which is monitoring this. This is your main condition and oftentimes um, what you really created the loop for. And finally, just for a proof of concept, let's go ahead and um, also 
wire a, a little control to simulate a real error. So let's go ahead and change this to control. That'll be your simulated error. And let's actually bundle that into here. So we, we're going to leverage another tool that LabVIEW has, which just allows you to merge errors. So this one, in this case, we'll, we'll use it second because we're faking data and really the real error is more important. But what this does is it just bundles. And it, if there's two errors, at least in LabVIEW 2018, it will return the first one, which is this wire. Um, but because typically there won't be one here, we'll, um, we'll use our simulated error. So in this case, Let's go back here. So this is our simulated error. So now we're running, we're running. But for example, let me just make a code, uh, actually negative, negative 120 and test error. And then as soon as I click this false, you can see that it stopped. And the reason it stopped because this generated an error. And then when we checked here, that immediately uh, will have caused an error. So you can see uh, also if we probe it, we will also see that. So immediately exactly so was, uh, the wire was still there because we had left this control filled out and as soon as we started uh, we noticed that there was this error um, and again test error that's what we typed in here uh, and you can see that the final condition has been met and our logic uh, is stopped so really those are four main uh, points um, for stopping a while loop preventing those infinite loops now you can use any which one of these four, the stop button, the error condition, the while loop condition has been met, or the timing condition has been met. So any one of these fours can, four can be used, and really you want to use at least two or three. And the reason being is because uh, you want to make sure that there's multiple ways that your loop can exit, and the more you have, um, the more likely you are that you won't encounter this uh, infinite loop, and you'll give yourself more options to end the loop manually without aborting your overall um, application. Uh, and that's really important because maybe maybe you're stuck in this loop and you just want to manually override it. So you want to click the stop button, but you don't want to actually end the whole application. You just want to end this loop. And in this case, our loop is our application. So this will stop the VI. But in applications where this is just a small section of it, um, we'll want to maybe just only stop this loop. And that's a good way to do that as well. So feel free to try these out um, this is a very good way for you guys to learn more about loops as well and uh, let's just go ahead and save this into our lab view so we're going to say uh, while while loop conditions so let's save that we've saved that now as an example but uh, try this out for yourself see how you like it leave any comments and um, yeah till next time